Right, so my guest this morning is uh, Abraham Amaleba. He's a legal practitioner, and um, he will tell us more about this issue and shed some more light on it for us. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Okay, so um, the, e uh, the Supreme Court has ruled the entire process as unconstitutional and ordered the EC to use the appropriate legislation. What is the appropriate legislation, and why did the EC not use it? The legal principle has always been that you cannot build something on nothing. Now, when you look at the Constitution, it provides that the EC should provide a law that would regulate the conduct of the assembly elections. So you notice that the EC went ahead, commenced preparations, towards the this is assembly election without any law backing the process. Why on earth would they do that? I wouldn't is, is this a normal practice? I wouldn't know, but I would think that it is because they lack some legal advice at the time. Don't forget that the commissioners are not lawyers. And so they did not have that legal advice as to whether they could do what they were doing. The I understand that, but is that enough reason? Is, is that a good enough excuse that an institution as big as the EC did not know what they were doing or because they didn't have the requisite legal advice, they went ahead and did something without any legal backing? Unless the whole EC. Unless you can show that they were reckless or they engage in willful acts but i want to think that they when the matter went to court their lawyer kept referring to pieces of legislation sure. trying to back what they did i'm sure they also without um, legal advice thought that they could have done this thing within the existing then laws, laws available, available. Okay. so it came to light that because there was no legal backing for what they did the supreme court had no option than to say that all the processes leading up to what would have culminated into tomorrow's, and don't forget to have the elections would have been tomorrow. Tomorrow, yes, the yes. third. So all the processes leading up to what would have culminated into the elections tomorrow are declared null and void. Now, people are asking the questions, so why is it that one person alone could bring all these processes to an end? Why is it that the Supreme Court did not look at a larger picture? But let me say that it is because there has been a breach of the constitution and when there's a breach of the constitution the the hands of the judges are even tied because they are also regulated by the same constitution and so this is a serious breach said that the supreme court couldn't have glossed over it and say that let's allow it to go because of the interest of one person indeed this ruling is not in the interest of that fisherman this ruling is to protect the sanctity, sanctity of, of the constitution. constitution okay so wh what exactly is the breach what exactly did the ec do wrong now we know that the gentleman the fisherman who brought um, the suit um uh, said that he had been denied um, filing of his nomination as he presented them a day late a date later than the the closing of the filing of registration so what exactly is the breach w what happened is, is there more to to it than what the pre uh, fisherman presented yeah, there's more to it. It's not just about him not being, not being able to file mm. as the EC closed the nomination. It is about the fact that the law that would have regulated the elections, which is to say the law that would demarcate the boundaries. So even as to the, the filing of um, his registration and all of that, was would have been contained in that law? Would have contained in okay. that law. So even the law that would demarcate the various boundaries so that the elections can take place was absent at the time that the EC opened and closed their nominations. Okay. So like I indicated in my opening submissions, at that time, one could say that the EC was building something on nothing because they had no legs to stand. What is the authority for doing what, what you were doing? doing? There was no law at the time. So, so when did the law come into being? When did it come into being? It would have come into being after, because it's supposed to be laid in parliament for 21 days. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure after the close of the nomination that's when it came yeah. the exact date i don't know okay. so now we have that law the ci is present 
But what law is that? The constitutional instrument okay. that is supposed to regulate and demarcate the... Is that uh, the 85? The 85. CI 85. So, point is that the crux of the matter has always been that when the EC open nominations uh, engage in the, uh, what is the platform debates and all those processes and the adverts, they did that at a time when this law was not in place. Okay. And so the, EC, the Supreme Court felt that that breached the Constitution, and for that matter, they should go and start all over again. Okay, so after the coming into force of this law, uh, was it realized that um, some people had been affected? Had they affected the process at all? Would it have been okay if um, nobody had been affected by it? Do you think the ruling would have been different? If the matter hadn't gone to court, I'm afraid we would have continued with the process. Okay. But a, a law would have been breached, the, the constitution would have been breached, but because nobody raised it, okay. it would have passed. No, even after someone raised it, if, um, like you're saying, everybody was saying that, why would just one person um, just disturb the whole process? If n nobody had been affected, if this fisherman hadn't been affected, and anybody else, for that matter, had been affected during the process, do you think the uh, Supreme Court would have ruled the way? If nobody did? had been affected, and yet somebody went to court, court. The it Supreme Court will rule in that yeah. same way mm -hmm. because the Supreme Court is supposed to protect the Constitution. Okay. And so that's why I'm, I, kept, I have been saying that this ruling is not to benefit the fisherman. fisherman. It's just, a, it's just uh, that he went to court. But the ruling is actually to protect the Constitution so that we don't have state institutions breaching our Constitution. Okay, so what impact will this ruling have on the elections in Ghana? Particularly the District Assembly elections. Yes. First and foremost, we are all aware that the elections cannot come off tomorrow. Two, this ruling would have an effect in terms of the financial outlay of the various assembly, prospective assemblymen. Uh, that is to say that uh, they have gone around, spent money to engage in their elections, and now they are being told that they cannot. Mm -hmm. So if the process is going to be open again, that's another bout or another round of campaign, campaign. and that will be some expenditure to them. More importantly, and people don't know about this, most people have not averted their minds, is that the assemblies, most of, not most of, all of them, the tenure of office of the assemblies will end by the 15th or 16th of March to the 27th, 26th of March. Which means that if we are unable to hold the elections before this period, there will be a vacuum, there will be a vacuum decision making at the various assemblies, metro metropolitan and the municipal assemblies, will not be able to take place and so it has larger, bigger consequences mm -hmm. on our, our democratic process. Mm -hmm. well, was the EC giving a time frame within which to conduct a new Not election? so, because the EC under the constitution cannot be directed to, you know, it's not under As the direction of anybody. its own affairs. So uh, what the court did and rightful was to say what you have done is wrong, but set a new date to, on, at your own time and pace, to ensure that you do the proper thing. Mm. But, but I'm the sure the EC will keep in mind what you've just said and try to... Exactly. To and I am challenging the EC that this is not rocket science. What is happening now, that they should open the nominations again, they should give us new dates. It's not rocket science. They are able to do that by close of today. At worst, tomorrow they will be able to come out with new dates and then give us a, a, a roadmap as to how to do the elections. I don't think that they should keep quiet over this for a very mm. period, a very long time and drag it and drag it they should come quickly we already they started the processes and it's just a matter the of things changing are in dates. place so things dates. are in place so mm. yes about this and tweaking one or two things mm -hmm. and they shouldn't keep long on this mm. matter can the ec mm. be sued can someone maybe one of the candidates who feels they've suffered some kind of loss financial loss due to you know campaigns and resources that have been lost now can, can someone take on the ec that is a good question, and people have been asking this question. One thing that guides the legal principle is the floodgate principle. You don't want to open the floodgates if you cannot contain the water. So if opportunity is given for just one person to sue the EC for the loss of their expenditure, you can imagine the number of prospective assemblymen who have filed and have not been able to recoup their... Who all want, who all want to go to court. And a ruling of, of such a nature would collapse the EC. So because of the floodgate principle, it is difficult, in my view, for anybody to go to court. And again, this is... Difficult, but not 
impossible yeah you can go to court it's not impossible to go to court but how do you you know uh prove to the court that of all the assembly prospective assemblymen who contested or no who filed you are the most hit to the extent that you should be given a special case does it matter yeah it matters because of the floodgate principle i've indicated we don't want to collapse state institutions if not so doom so doom so we have all gone to court to see easy can't we that's what i'm saying the floodgate principle if you do that we are going to collapse that institution what's wrong with that what's wrong with that then uh, you will not get electricity again <laughs> <laughs> so that's what's wrong with that okay yes. so it's possible but not not uh, yeah, practical but, uh, practical because of the legal principles that govern how cases are sent to court and all those things okay. i I've heard people saying that they should also, the Attorney General should prosecute the Electoral Commissioner for causing financial loss to the state. That's criminal. Mm -hmm. But I think that you need to prove that the uh, EC was reckless, engaged in willful acts, and that, above all, they were not, they did not engage in acts of due diligence before, before proceeding on the processes. But I am of the view that the EC was actually acting in good faith and thinking that they could go ahead with that process. So an administrative act which was done based on the fact that you acted honestly without criminal intention or evil intention cannot ground an action against you because for me, you cannot show that the EC was reckless. You cannot show that they were negligent. You cannot show that the for me, you cannot also show that it was a willful act to cause financial loss to the state. Mm -hmm. Samali, but does that then mean that we had no idea at all that um, the EC was not um, was not going according or going according to any laws? It, it, did they have to take just this one fisherman to draw our attention? Is that there was no law in place? Did it not? strike anybody at all you know i told you that uh, the ec i'm not speaking i don't work with them so but looking at the actions of their lawyer in court i'm sure the ec thought that the existing regulations could contain was enough, was enough to contain what they were doing okay. and that's how come their lawyer was moving from one law to another okay. again there have been concerns about the conduct of the lawyers the lawyers in court and i think that it's unfair to say that the lawyers did not do well these are not internal solicitors. They are external solicitors. They do not take part in the day-to-day -day administration or the day-to-day -day decisions of the EC. Mm. So for you to say that, for, yes, mean. for you to say that, yeah, they are consultants. They only come into the picture when the rot has been occasioned in the EC. So they will now come and try, to, try to salvage to the up. situation. But they are not lawyers who are in the EC daily on daily basis giving proffering legal advice. Shouldn't the EC have such lawyers? That is the though? point now. We now need a situation where there will be an in-house legal team, not just at the head office, but even at the regional no. offices to ensure that they give advice to because the EC's work is regulated by law. Oh, Everything about EC is about law. And I think that time has come. The spate of cases that we have against the EC Time has now come for the EC to begin to put I'm actually up. very surprised that they don't have in-house lawyers. Um, in the past, we were not seeing so many cases mm -hmm. such as this. Uh, kudos also to the fact that the Ghanaian is now becoming aware of his rights. So one uh, advantage is that we can now say that as Ghanaians, we are beginning to be alive to our legal responsibilities. And that is what I will say in respect of the fisherman for knowing that he has a right and he wants to enforce it. So now we should be ready to have plethora of legal cases against the EC. So the EC should now also position itself in such a way as to ensure that it will not be infringing the law. Mm, lastly, speaking of the uh, fisherman, um, I was thinking it's quite interesting that he brought a suit based on the fact that he submitted his forms late. I mean, if the EC had been working uh, within the it's mandated laws would he have had any leg to stand on at all i mean nominations are closed filing are closed and you submit it a day later and you still want to go to court and seek redress i think in his case the submission of the forms later than the period given by the ec was not the real issue uh, what came to his uh, aid was that 
also on the part of the EC, something went wrong. They did uh -huh. not behave well. Okay. So it is not a late submission, and that is why so people. So he was aggrieved by certain other things. He was aggrieved, but luckily, there was an opening for, for him, him to, to capitalize on it and go to court. But as we speak now, if the EC comes up with a new date and he again submits yes. it late, the law will not come to him. Yes. Okay. Thank yeah. you so much for your time this morning. Yeah. You've learned so much uh, from Mr. Abraham Amali.